All right. Welcome back, everybody. Um, just a quick, I know I usually do the Shabbos shindig, but we'll do uh, just a quick little class on Shabbos Teshuva, as it's called Shabbos Tshuva. It is called the Shabbos of Teshuva. For, there's a, as everything is, there's a esoteric, exoteric and an esoteric reason, because like you have a body and a soul. So, so does the Torah. So the one of the reasons called Shabbos Teshuva is because it's the Shabbos between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And we know these, it's called the Aseris Yimei Teshuva, the 10 days of Teshuva. And there are, it's just sandwiched between two days that have to deal with Teshuva, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So, I guess somebody's calling. What, and it's the Shabbos before Yom Kippur, obviously, so we're getting preparations for Teshuva. Another reason it's called the Shabbos Teshuva is because of the Haftorah. The Haftorah of Hosea, Teshuva Yisrael Ada Vayalikecha, return, O Israel, to Hashem your God. Whether this Parsha is the Parsha of Nitzalvim Veyele or Hazinu, it could be three possible Parshias between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The Haftorah is always Shuva Yisrael. So it's called Shabbos Teshuva for those. For those two reasons, but let's get into a little bit of a uh, more of a mystical reason why it's called Shabbos Teshuvah. What does it actually mean for us? The idea of Shabbos and Teshuvah seem to be opposite ideas. Teshuvah is a time when we do introspection, we break our heart, you know, over the things that we've done in the past, the sins that we've done, so to speak. Um, the imperfections, the mishaps, and we're trying to get closer. We're trying to, uh, you know, make ourselves more humble, have a contrite heart, bitterness, um, and uh, and resolve to never do it again. But and Shabbos, what is Shabbos called? Shabbos is called Nachlasenu. It's called a gift. It's called an inheritance. It's Shabbos Tainu. Shabbos really is called a time of pleasure. Shabbos Oneg, you might hear that often, Shabbat Oneg, which means pleasure. It's God's gift to us. And God says, I, if there's one day of the week that I seek that I have pleasure, it's on Shabbos. In other words, there's no focus on sadness. In fact, you have to, you have, to have joy on Shabbos. If a person is mourning, in a state of mourning, yeah, they had a relative that passed away, it's obviously they're very sad. There is a halachic obligation. There's a Torah obligation to be joyful. Outwardly, at the very least, outwardly, you have, to show, you have to show joy. You're not allowed to show sadness. No, we do things privately to show that we're still mourning. You don't, hopefully, you don't have to learn those laws. But uh, outwardly, nevertheless, you have, to have, you have to have pleasure because God takes pleasure in Shabbos, and therefore, you have to emulate, and we're always trying to emulate God, so therefore, we always have this idea of pleasure. So the idea of chuba is usually bitterness, having a contrite heart, Shabbos is pleasure, is joy. How can you have, uh, how do they work hand in hand? Why is the Shabbos called Shabbos Teshuvah? So there are two levels of Teshuvah. According to Hasidus, there's what's called Teshuvah Tata and Teshuvah Ila'a. Teshuvah Tata literally means the lower level of Teshuvah. That's the level of Teshuvah that we were talking about, where you have bitterness, contrite heart, I feel bad about what I did in the past. I'm resolving to change myself. That's the month of Elul. And that is really the beginning of Rosh Hashanah. The focus kind of becomes on oneself. The problem with that, and that's fine. And that's what you should do. And that's the first step in having full, proper teshuva. Focusing on oneself, my deficiencies, and and fixing them. And what hopefully what happens, hopefully what happens is you have humility at the end. That's ultimately what you want. Humility. And humility, according to Judaism, which is the true definition, uh, obviously there's many different uh, Judaism speaks at length about humility. But humility is recognizing that everything comes from God. Nothing, you're not really a self-made person. You were really at the right place at the right time with the right mindset to receive some sort of gift, whether it was a, an idea that somebody gave you, um, yeah, business deal. Um, it says in Hayom Yom that 
a person, there's a great advantage to a business person over a Torah scholar. A business person sees what's called hashkacha pratit, hashkacha pratis, the divine hand, uh, da, God's individual providence um, over the person, much more often than a Torah scholar. A Torah scholar sits in all day and he studies Torah. He's not exactly seeing God's hand all the time. He's studying, he's not really involved in the world. But the one who goes out into the world and gets involved in the world and tries to change the world sees God's hand throughout all the process. One big miracle. Yeah, that's why I love watching athletes, um, the guys who make it to the top, especially now in the NFL and the NBA. Uh, you see the one, the top, top people, they're like, all oh, the glory goes to God. All the glory goes to God. I came from, you have no idea what kind of life I came from and everything. I just met the right person at the right time who pushed me for this and pushed me for that. Everything was working against, working against me. But at the end of the day, I made it to the top. All the glory goes to God. I mean, it's, I, I, I love it when they say that, not just because I'm an observant person, a religious person, but I, th there's a true humility there. It's the ones who think, it's the ones who, uh, who are the ones that crash and burn at the end? Usually the ones say, I made myself. I'm the ultimate. I am everything. They're the ones that usually crash and burn in the end because, because they're not, what, why? Why is that? Because humility leaves you as an open vessel. You are not full of yourself. You're not full of yourself, literally meaning I'm not full to the extent that I can't receive. I can't receive goodness. I can't receive an idea. I can't receive uh, anybody else. I have no other room for anybody, anybody else in my life. I have no room for God's blessing because I'm so full of myself. That's the ultimate. That's where we're trying to get to with Elul and Rosh Hashanah. Humility. To leave yourself as a vessel to receive God's blessing comes why because what's going to happen in Yom Kippur on Yom Kippur we're going to have the holiest day of the year God's essence is going to be revealed and the more open you are for that the more prepared you are for that the more you're going to get so to speak, right the more you're going to be filled up not for your own sake but you're doing it in order to serve God and that's exactly why Shabbos is so special and that's why Shabbos and Teshuvah go hand in hand because Shabbos is now the higher level of Teshuvah before we spoke about Teshuvah Tata, this lower level of Teshuvah, which leaves you as humble. Then comes Teshuvah Ila'a, the higher level Teshuvah, literally the higher level Teshuvah, which is a place that you cannot reach on your own. Shabbos, as we say in Lechadodi, is Makor Habracho. It is the source of the blessings. Now, on a simple level, it's the source of the blessings for the week. But um, on a Hasidic level, the source of the blessings is revealed. What is the source of the blessings? All blessings? God. He's the source of the blessings. Before, we're always like, give me blessings. I want to get blessings in order to raise myself up. Forget the blessing itself. We're going to be put in front of the source of the blessings. Um, and that is God himself. And that is present. That divine consciousness, that level is revealed on Shabbos. So it is a much greater place. It is a gift. You cannot be, you have to be brought up to that place. You cannot reach, we cannot reach on our own. We only have to be brought up. That's why God, Shabbos is called a gift, an inheritance, pleasure. It's all these things that you did not do on your own is put upon you. But in this case, it is God has brought closer to you. That's really what's going on. When say God gives you a gift, it usually just means God brought you closer to himself and therefore you are obviously automatically getting more blessings or you see things more clearly, which is really what blessings kind of are. They give you clarity that you see things that you really have all the blessings already. The problem is we don't see it. So when you come closer to the source, you see it from his perspective that you really have everything. And then for, therefore, then you have menuch vadas, uh, a settled mind, menuch a settled soul. And that's why Shabbos is called menucha. It's, it's settled. You're very settled. Everything's very settled. Everything's calm. I'm, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. I feel at home. I, I have time to think. You're expansive. Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't get involved in the world. We're above the world. We're about closer to God. So that's the higher level of Teshuvah, right? The, you're brought even closer to God. So that's why it's called Shabbos Teshuvah. And uh, you have to be humble. And humility is really the best. You, you have the most joy in life. You have the most, uh, you have tranquility and um, you're more at peace. And, uh, and it opens yourself up to much more blessings when you have humility. And hopefully 
you've done a little bit of that uh, as a preparation for Yom Kippur. Um, if not, you can still work on it on Shabbos. On Shabbos, we don't do anything. We don't do any vidoy. We don't bang our chests. We don't, uh, yeah, no confession. No, we don't focus on the negative. We focus only on the positive. Um, and I want to just, I want to just share a quick little story. The Baal Shem Tev, the Holy Baal Shem Tev, the leader, as we've spoken many times, Yisrael Baal Shem Tev, the founder of the Hasidic movement, was once looking for a chazan on Yom Kippur. And three chazanim, three cantors, or leaders of the congregation, leaders of the prayer service, approached him and uh, were interested in being the right man for the job. So the first person came and he gave a very beautiful uh, rendition of Ne'ila, of Kol Nidre, which is something that we'll say on, on, and we'll talk about Kol Nidre, the opening of Yom Kippur. And yeah, whatever, there are many different highlights in Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is, to me, the best. The best songs, the best everything. Um, and he gave a beautiful and stirring and um, haunting and holy and slow melody throughout the whole time. I really, it would bring you to tears. It was amazing. And he said, the Baal said, thank you very much. And the next person came and it was, it was sweetness in the, in the depths of his melodies. And it was very stirring once again. I don't even have words to describe it. Slow and moving. And I, I brought a person to feeling, you know, it's a day of atonement. So of, it really brought a person to a state of teshuva and feeling regret over the past. And uh, yeah, he walked away. He was even more impressed. Well, that, that was also amazing. Then came the third chazan, and the third chazan came, and everything was sung in a joyful tune. Happiness, joy. These are not really tunes you hear typically on Yom Kippur. Typically, you, especially back in the day, it was times of you, people mistake, mistook it. They would mistake it for a sad day. You would think you, uh, Yom Kippur is a sad day. Oh, I'm such a, yeah, a lot of confession. What have I done in the past? Ashamnu, Baganu, Gazanu, Debarnu, Daifi. I spoke terrible. I uh, purposely sinned. I by accident. I sinned by accident. I called this guy this, and I said she was like that, and I, you know, whatever. It's very sad. It's a very sad and um, stirring and emotional type of. But he came with joy. Asham no bagadnu, which is the tune that we use. You'll hear it. Di barnu doifi. Ah, ma, 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 ma. Why? When we're confessing our sins, it's with such a beautiful melody. And this is the source of where it comes from. Why do we have such a beautiful melody? You would think like, would you imagine you saying, I'm sorry, I hate you. You wouldn't say such a thing when you're trying to say sorry to somebody. But why was this person saying with such joy? And the reason was the Baal Shem Tov asked him, why are you singing the video, the confession, the confessing of your sins with such joy? So he said, what do you mean, why am I singing with joy? He goes, I'm, what, this is how I view things. Because I'm a gardener. And all, my dream as a gardener is to be a gardener in the place where the king has the most pleasure, his garden. Yeah, a real beautiful garden gives you the greatest pleasure, Garden of Eden. What is Aden? Garden of Aden was Aden. Bliss. It's where God has his bliss. He calls this world his garden, by the way, parenthetically. But I, I want to be the gardener. Now what? Now tell me. When the king calls me and he says to me, there are some weeds surrounding my most beautiful flower, the most precious flower that I have. Would you go and remove those weeds for me? They're choking the flower. The flower cannot grow, it cannot live, it cannot produce. Do you think I'm going to do that with sadness? I'm going to do that with joy. What a merit, what a source that I have, what a merit I have to protect the most precious item in the most precious place for the most precious person. The king's flower, the most beautiful, precious item in the king's garden and for the king himself. When I pick those weeds, I'm going to be so joyful. What, picking weeds, getting down in the dirt, 
Most people will say, what a horrible job. You're out in the sun. No, for me, what a pleasure. So the same thing with myself. What am I doing when, I, uh, when we're confessing? We're removing the we. We're getting, we're, the, it's surrounding this flower, this precious item, this godly soul that we have been given for 80, 90, 120 years. Very temporary. It doesn't, it's not a, it's not a perennial, you know, it's not, it's not in the body. It's not a perennial. I'm not going to keep going. I got to do everything I can to keep it there, to keep it precious. And God has such pleasure when this soul is in this body and doing the right thing. The soul, I must protect the soul. And by removing all the schmutz and the garbage around, I would do it with such joy. And that's why today, if you go into, especially at least the Chabad shul, if not all Hasidic shuls, if not all shuls, I don't know. I only know Chabad. I'm sorry, I'm very close-minded. Yeah, you'll hear, ah, ma, ma, ma. you'll hear it many, many times. But remember the story. Ah, ma, 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 ya, ma, 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 ya, 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 uh, ma, ma, we're confessing. Read the words in English when we're singing that song. <laughs> um, so, l'chaim, to knowing who you are, who are your soul, and what, what we have ahead, that we have a tremendous opportunity. It is the holiest day of the year coming up, and Shabbos is a foretaste of what it will be like when Mashiach comes, that we'll constantly live in the state of being close to God, which is ultimately what we want, and may it happen speedily, even before Shabbos. Does anybody have any questions? As always, man. All right. Good. So enjoy. Take, take advantage of the day. And um, realize what you are, what you have. And your life will be much greater. Good job, everybody. Good to see you again.